Hello and welcome to The Green Stream, a podcast brought to you by Sustainable Business Network Detroit, a network of partnerships between Southeast Michigan stakeholders, innovators, and changemakers. Each partner is on a mission to advance and amplify sustainable business practices, and we're here to learn from, share, and help activate a sustainable way forward for Greater Detroit. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a review and join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And head over to our website, sbn-detroit.org. Now, let's listen in to our conversation with today's sustainability leaders. Hi, I'm Terry Barclay, President and CEO of Inforum and Chair of the Sustainable Business Network of Detroit. And I am just absolutely thrilled that today for our podcast, our Greenstream podcast, we have Allison Malik, who is Managing Director of New Lab. But Allison, you and I have known each other for a while um, through many different exciting careers, although this one I am just dying to hear about what's going on at New Lab. I think the last time we really talked was when, you know, you are such a rock star. You were featured in a book that I co-edited for SAE International. So welcome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. And I'm I'm excited to, to bring you up to speed on what we're uh, doing with New Lab in Detroit. So, so I just have to ask you though first, you know, you've had such an incredible career as an innovator. And I was hoping you could talk about that a little bit. I mean, I think we first met, gosh, back when you were with General Motors, but you were, you know, running GM Ventures. You know, you have just been an innovator every step of the way. You've been uh, awarded as one of the top, you know, women to watch in innovation and technology. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, so my journey, I, I joke that mobility has been the thread. Uh, but I've, I've looked at, at that from a lot of different perspectives. So as, as you noted, we met uh, during my days at GM. While I was there, I had the opportunity to be an engineer working on electric vehicle charging uh, in corporate venture, investing on behalf of GM, uh, and then actually left GM and co-founded a startup uh, where we spun IP out of the University of Michigan and deployed electric autonomous vehicles to provide community transportation. And from there, acknowledged that there's much bigger forces at play in the mobility sphere and that policy has a really big role. So I, I actually took on a role uh, growing a new organization focused on system level uh, transportation policy that could lead towards decarbonization. And I stood up that team, got to uh, have a lot of exposure into the freight and movements of good space, which to me, uh, my, my curiosity is what drives me. So it was great to learn about policy and about the movement of, of goods and learn about the freight uh, sector. And when the opportunity came up uh, to head up New Lab's expansion into Detroit, I, I just couldn't turn it down. Uh, it felt really exciting to get to bring that power of a cross-sectionary ecosystem to Detroit and let Detroit be the home of mobility innovation for New Lab. Okay, so break it down for us a little bit. Just tell us about the elements of New Lab. Help us understand. I, I'm just blown away by this project. Yeah, so New Lab as an organization, we actually started in Brooklyn and we are a multidisciplinary and cross-sector ecosystem. And we, we pull that ecosystem together to really work on projects that can help to mobilize people capital and expertise. So everybody likes to talk about new technology, but if you don't actually have new technology and the people that can implement it and real business need, it's just that, it's new technology. So we with New Lab try to bring all of those pieces together to help address systemic challenges in energy, mobility, and materials. Detroit is gonna be our, our home for mobility innovation, uh, pulling that ecosystem together. So yeah, so you you just you just touched on my next question of why Detroit and you know what's what what are you going to do in Detroit? So uh, yeah, so New Lab has a history of working in transportation from autonomous vehicles to electric technology, working uh, with different cities and communities, and that really helped our organization to understand 
what an opportunity space transportation and mobility are um, and how much need there is to, to bring new technology to bear to solve real world challenges. And so that's what uh, made Detroit and our partnership with Michigan Central uh, so attractive uh, because we think that the future of Detroit is really bright the automotive industry started here. All of the innovation that drove the auto industry, it continues to drive the automotive industry, but it actually continues to drive many industries that we just don't take enough credit for, in my humble local opinion. Uh, and so we see this as a great opportunity to help Detroit shine, but also to bring new innovators to the community to help us be able to leverage the skills and talents and ideas that we have as well. So how do you define and see sustainability from the perspective of New Lab? Yeah, so when we think about sustainability, um, high level, we see it as a real challenge for humanity. And as we think about the work that we want to tackle, I talked about the focus in mobility, materials, and energy. When we think about sustainability, those are the three biggest levers I think that we have to be able to, to move the needle, to improve how humanity exists on the planet uh, in a way that's sustainable and, and allows us to continue to enjoy the, the lives that we have today. So has um, New Lab implemented a, you know, sustainable practices in the build out uh, process of your Detroit building. And maybe you could talk a little bit about that at the book depository and the relationship with Ford. Yeah, so um, our work in Detroit, we are the uh, innovation partner of Michigan Central. And Michigan Central is the entity that is partnered with Ford Motor Company. So Michigan Central is managing uh, the train station as well as the book depository, which is a building just next to the train station. Uh, we, New Lab, will be managing the book depository, again, bringing innovation to that district and really helping to bring the vision around uh, bringing different people together, acknowledging that, that innovation isn't a solo act. How do we bring the right pieces together to make that happen here? From a sustainability and partnership perspective, I think one thing that's really critical to acknowledge is just reuse. Mm. The book depository itself has been sitting alone for 30 years, sitting alone, sitting empty for 30 years. Uh, and when we think about sustainability, figuring out how to reuse those materials and bring breathe new life back into them is actually really critical. Um, and I think that that when we think about the work of New Lab and even where and how we site, we're looking for partners that are looking to reactivate space because that's actually one of the best uses. Um, there's already roads running there. There's already utilities running there. Uh, and there's already a community to get to work with. And we think that that, that really is, is what's exciting and creates the opportunity to, to think about on the finer details of how do, how do you drive sustainability. You know, <clears throat> that is such a powerful statement, right? You know, it's very grounding and it really provides a great bedrock platform um, for, for your work. And I don't know um, how much you can say, but is there is there anything you can tell us about the five startups that will participate in the inaugural cohort um, of the mobility studio? Is there is there anything that isn't top secret that you can talk about? <laughs> Absolutely. So like I said, we've joined forces with Michigan Central. So that way we can activate that uh, our building and that and the region as an open platform for mobility innovation. And we are working together to think about how do we create an ecosystem that helps to support founders to really bring all of the resources to bear that one might need to uh, go from idea to impact. And that can be everything from other founders to lament with you, uh, venture <laughs> capital resources, uh, making connections throughout the supply base. We have we know how to build products in Michigan. Mm -hmm. We know how to do that. And this is really an opportunity for us to, to show that off. Uh, how do we bring that to bear and help make those types of connections? How do we help make customer connections? Uh, and we really think that that is going to create a strong environment for uh, companies to be able to come here and grow and thrive. And so we, we've already started
started some work like you like you hinted at um, with the mobility studio that we kicked off we we have some companies that are already operating and doing great things uh, one of them is sufa which has built the uh, a first of its kind solar powered digital sign so when you think about information for transportation it's actually really hard to get to people not everyone has cell phones and not every bus stop has electricity so how do you actually make it super easy to install this type of infrastructure and make sure that people get the information that they need, which is a critical part of efficiently and effectively accessing mobility. And SUFA has tackled that in a way that really makes it easy to, to deploy. And then it makes it easy for people that are trying to navigate around our city. Uh, another one is Lazarillo, uh, which provides navigation ass uh, assistance through an app for individuals who are visually impaired. Uh, and with this, we're, we're actually mapping the Cork Town business, uh, business district and transit information. So then the app can actually help people navigate that area with audible assistance. So as we think about how to improve mobility and access for people, it's not just, you know, are there more cars, but thinking about how literally how people access the information and making sure that they can come about it in the way that they need. Another one that I think is really exciting is uh, Sway Mobility. So we're wor working with them to offer an EV car share platform. As we think about the electrified transition, which is so critical for sustainability and really thinking about our energy supplies and our environment, figuring out how we can make sure that everyone is able to access this type of clean transportation is really critical. And the price point now, and just cars in general are expensive. EVs are coming in line with new cars, but that's still really expensive for a lot of households. So how do we actually think about innovating on access to electric and clean transportation? And Sway is doing just that. So we've actually got a pilot with them allowing Detroit residents to rent uh, EVs for sort of short, flexible uh, times of day to be able to run the errands that they might need to do and then return the vehicle, making it super simple, but also giving more people access to that type of clean and sustainable transportation. You know, I, oh boy, I just love all of these. I, I'm kind of wondering, you know, can, can you talk a little bit about the principles or your thinking? How do you curate? You know, what, how do you select and curate who's part of this space? So that is a, a great question and one that we're currently innovating on that we're pretty pretty excited about because when you tell people like oh we're we're going to be the open platform for mobility innovation that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people and as we think about curation it's really about how do we create a useful network of people. So yes, curation is which startups should show up, but it's making sure that once they show up, do we have the right access to uh, potential customers? Do we know um, that we can help them get clarity on the pain points that they're trying to solve? Mm -hmm. And starting to build that, that network and that infrastructure and awareness, it's a really powerful thing because you start to get uh, one company will work with one client that maybe could help a different company that, that showed up or they're having similar challenges so they can team up and work together. So you'll see and you'll be hearing more about this, but we're really going to be focused on these clusters um, that are, are focused around specific challenges that we see in mobility. Some of them will be focused on passenger transportation. Some of them will be uh, focused on goods transportation, but really trying to be focused in an area. That way we can be uh, thoughtful about how to create that network and, and start to drive some of those value adds. Mm -hmm. So, Allison, I just can't resist, you know, now that we have you here, <laughs> to, ask you, <laughs> to ask you a little bit about, um, you know, given the recent investments in infrastructure to create sort of a more energy efficient economy within the U.S., um, what do you see the role, what role will electrification play? So as we think about sustainability in transportation in the US, I think electrification has a really important role to play uh, in a, across different modes of transportation, including cars, buses, trucks. As we think about overall sustainability, electrification is important, 
but it can't be the only lever that we're using. And so as we look at some of the exciting uh, things coming out of Congress in terms of uh, looking at uh, our infrastructure bill and, and thinking about even, yes, we need to be rebuilding our roads and bridges, but how do we actually make it more accessible to different types of transportation? That's a conversation that we need to be having. It's being had globally at different levels. And I think especially for Michigan, it's incredibly important. Our uh, economic uh, prosperity has been driven in part because of the prosperity of the automotive industry. So yes, we need to make sure that that electrifies, but we also need to acknowledge that as the global population grows, car, car growth can't keep up with it. There just aren't quite enough resources in all of the mines and all of the recycling facilities. So what are other things that we can be thinking about and that's where uh, looking at other modes like uh, electric scooters, like uh, even uh, EV halls. So looking at using air when needed for you know specific package movement, uh, people movement will come in time. But really, I think it's also exciting to watch it active modes. How are we thinking about building out biking infrastructure, making sure that it's safer and easier for people to walk uh, if they're able to, and, and making sure that people have optionality, I think is going to be another really key lever in addition to electrification. You know, <clears throat> because we've known each other for a while, I know that you have been talking about this theme in particular for a while, right? So, so where are you kind of, what gives you hope? I'm really curious about, you know, how you sustain your energy level around this, you know, because <laughs> I'm sure there's got to be ups and downs, right? You know, well, there are ups and downs every day. Um, I think so. Um, on the broad base, I think it's it's just really exciting to see it's it like the time is now, um, in terms of within the U.S. sort of the the acknowledgement that we need to reinvest in our infrastructure and the acknowledgement that we should be thinking about ways to do that sustainably so it can last for the next hundred years and what should that look like? Uh, and even here in Michigan, I think seeing some of the recent wins in the startup ecosystem that are really big. So a few years ago, mm. unrelated to mobility, but Duo Systems exited to Cisco. It was a huge sale. And what is what is actually really important about that is how many new entrepreneurs and funders that creates for the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And what I really want to see and what I'm so excited about our work uh, with New Lab is, is for us to get a couple of those on the board in the mobility space, because that I think is going to catalyze uh, a new integration between the startup ecosystem of Detroit and the automotive ecosystem of Southeastern Michigan right mm -hmm. now. There's still more flights going to, to Silicon Valley, but I think that uh, if we're successful in the next few years, we're gonna see a lot of that happening here. And this is the perfect place to be testing it. Detroit is very unique in the fact that it's pretty dispersed. We have a very large metro area. So there's a lot of different places to experiment with solutions. So as we think about mobility mm -hmm. solutions and should it be a scooter, should it be a car? We can test all of that here. And as we think about really revolutionary mobility, um, let's take drones, for instance, where there aren't even like regulatory structures set up. We have a really unique position with our neighbor in Canada. Companies have to come here to innovate because this is the greatest place to be able to test out in two different regulatory regimes. And in mobility and transportation, that's really critical. There, are, I, I struggle to think of many, uh, aspects of transportation that aren't touched on in one way or another by policy. So being able to have that testing area where you've got two, well, four or six totally different uh, jurisdictions in terms of federal sort of state, provincial and local level, it's just, it's, it's really exciting because all of these threads are coming together at the same time. And I think that's what, that's what keeps me going uh, and, and gets me excited about catalyzing this ecosystem. I just love how you just itemized elements of our community that sometimes are talked about as liabilities, and you just talked about them as strengths um, and pluses as we work to become this hub. 
Um, and you know, what, what a wonderful way of viewing it. Um, and I think you're right. You know, we'll, we'll see how this sort of plays out in, in the long term. I'd like to go back to something that you've been talking about, really, you've been touching on all along. Um, and, you know, how this is an issue that that I, I, I constantly hear, you know, we kind of keep cycling back to it. And that's, you know, the question of how do we envision the future of mobility in a way that benefits everyone across all communities in a community like Detroit? So when we think about how to make sure that our problems are serving everyone, a big part of it is starting at the start is talking with everyone. And I, I really value the experience I had when I was at my mobility, running operations, mm -hmm. being out at our sites, talking directly with community members. I learned a lot about what it means to show up for a community and listen, mm -hmm. and then make sure you're delivering on what, what people are asking for. Because I think, especially in the new transportation and technology space, there's lots of great ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes there's good listening and sometimes there's not. <laughs> and so as we think about the process that we wanna bring to bear, even as I talked about those clusters of sort of network and how do we make sure we're focused, a big part of how we start to define that is starting with talking with the community, which will include um, problem owners. Uh, it's gonna include people, include people that work in a specific sector, it's gonna, for um, accessible transportation, it's gonna, like the work I talked about that we have done in Corktown, we're talking with people in Corktown that mm -hmm. live there about what they need. And I think that that is such a critical part of, of giving voice to make sure at the very start, as you're thinking about what you should even be tackling, you have that broad-based view. And then as you're making decisions, I'm like, okay, here's what we're gonna focus on bringing it back are we are we solving the the challenge that was really laid out for us and listening to people you do have to be careful i think people uh like to hearken back to to the henry ford uh <laughs> story about how you know if you ask people what they wanted they said they wanted a faster horse and well yes if you ask people what they want they will say they want a faster horse and maybe you can come up with a car but really he understood the the core truth that people wanted faster transportation, they wanted the ability to move faster. And it's that listening that that is really critical, especially at the start of a project, to make sure you're able to reflect back as it evolves what you heard and are you delivering on that. So it, it sounds like you're pretty optimistic that we've got an incredible opportunity to benefit everyone through this work. I'm very optimistic when I think about um, the work that we new lab are, are doing and more to come from the Michigan Central team. I don't want to uh, <laughs> get out ahead of them. So you'll have, you'll have to get a Carolina on the podcast uh, to talk about that. But I will say we new lab are getting to plug into a really a holistic view on how to show up, not just from what mobility innovations um, we want to, to be bringing to bear, but really how we work with the community and how we deliver for Detroit, a broad-based participation in the future of mobility. So what are some of the best practices in sustainability that you've come across over the course of this incredible career that you've already have with so much more to come um, that, that have inspired your work? Are there some examples that have are sort of North stars for you? That's a, a good question. Um, as I think about best practices, I so I'm trained as an engineer. Not everybody knows that. <laughs> I should have but said like that at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> my, my engineering 100 class was actually, I, it was an environmental sciences class and we were doing like life cycle, I, we, we had to do life cycle assessments and that really drove home for me the importance of thinking about things at scale, of um, thinking about the whole system. 
because just because the thing that you're holding in your hand is clean, doesn't mean that it showed up to you in a clean way, doesn't mean that it's getting uh, disposed of in a clean way. And I think having that in like my first or second semester of undergrad, uh, getting that like, and here's how you really look at impact was really informative and is what like it's driven how I've tried to bring things to bear across all the work that I've done. And frankly, it was really part of the reason why I was excited to come to New Lab because so often we hear like, if we just get this little sliver figured out, if we just get electrification figured out, it'll all be solved. And it's like, well, that's, that's not the whole story. So how do we bring the different groups together that are impacted, be they public or private to say, what's the whole story? Now, what do we need to tackle? Um, and I think that that, the ability of New Lab to bring that approach to innovation to Michigan, which already sits in the automotive industry, which is a backbone of transportation, but also is like a huge consumer in a good way of logistics and supply chain. Like we just have those insights that we can, that and that deep understanding across sort of the ripple effects of you do one thing here, how's it going to change over there? And I think that's where we can actually shine as a region. And, and I'm, I'm really excited to get to, to bring that to the fore. So what do you see? I mean, you've, you've really in many ways been talking about this all along, but do you have any sort of closing comments for us about what you see the role of sustainability being in the future of the city of Detroit? Oh, um, so I think sustainability has got to be the key in everybody's future. Uh, but I think Detroit is in a really unique position um, in part because we had a gap in development. And so as we think about what the future should look like, how, how land use should be executed, which has a huge implications on transportation and sustainability, um, we have the opportunity to, to try things that other communities don't have because they're too built up or they're to build out, like we have an opportunity to really demonstrate for the world, new opportunities, new ideas. I remember um, when the Detroit Future City uh, report came out some years ago, like lots of innovative thinking, like, yes, we have um, parts of the city that are lower density now in terms of how many homes are there. How do we actually use that land uh, and acknowledge that there might be stormwater overflow? That, that is a sustainability issue as we think about resiliency um, and how we're using our resources. We have real opportunities to experiment with things here that many other places don't. Um, and, and we have a real responsibility to, in part, as we think about that future um, and sustainability being a, a big focus just in terms of durability, resilience, reliability, how long can we keep things going? Michigan's in a really good position uh, from a, a climate change and sort of weather patterns perspective. And we have a really valuable resource that we can take care of and we should take care of um, because I think you know, more and more people are going to need access to things like fresh water <laughs> um, and things like that. And we have the ability to be out front innovating and showing the world how to do that. So one, one just final thing I just have to ask, it's, it's sort of the how can we help question or how can we participate or what should we be asking? What, what can people listening to this podcast, what, what next step should we be taking? Um, so in terms of next steps, more to come on ways to integrate uh, with New Lab uh, will be uh, where what I what I've been telling my operations team is we're in soft launch uh, through uh, the end of 2022 and into 2023. We're going to be doing a lot of work to to work on bringing the community together um, and starting to look at some of these issues as they relate to mobility. So um, follow us uh, on social media and keep your eyes peeled for some of the open events that we'll be having coming up. We want to make sure we're getting people into the building and driving important, interesting conversations. Uh, so we're on Instagram uh, and LinkedIn, um, and we'll be sure to share our events and also keep your ears open uh, and eyes open for the events that Michigan Central is hoping 
uh, is hosting. Like I said, New Lab is focused as the innovation partner, but as we think about impact for Detroit, a big part of the reason why we chose to come here is what Michigan Central is creating. So they'll be sharing more and creating a lot of unique and interesting ways for the community to, to get active. And uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, just think about how you can reduce, reuse, and recycle. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Al Allison, you know, thank you so much for taking some time away from uh, everything that you have going on right now <laughs> to join us and just share this incredible inspirational work that you're doing. Um, we're so excited. We're so glad you're here uh, in Detroit doing this work. And certainly SBND will be doing all we can to spread the word and support you and Michigan Central and all of the great sustainability work that's happening in our community. Um, so stay tuned, you know, to our website because we'll be doing all we can to promote. So um, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your latest adventure with us. Thank you so much for the time. It was my pleasure and I look forward to, to hosting you guys in the building suit. Thank you for tuning in to the Sustainable Business Network Detroit, the Green Stream podcast. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure to follow us on sbn-detroit.org and stay tuned for more conversations on sustainability from inside and around the city.